Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explains video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at social distancing and exactly how far we all need to stay apart in order to keep us safe. In the UK, the government has introduced a new 1 meter plus guidance, allowing people to get closer to each other than before. But this video isn't just about the UK, we'll be asking if 1 meter is really enough to keep us safe and how it compares to the original 2 meter distancing rules. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time you release a new video. So on Tuesday, a few days after the UK changed its coronavirus alert level from 4 to 3, Boris Johnson announced that the official coronavirus distancing guidance had changed from 2 metres to 1 metre plus, which means... They should remain 1 metre apart while taking mitigations to reduce the risk of transmission. By the way, it's worth noting that for all the fuss about the two meter rule, the government's guidance is just that, guidance. The two meter rule was never enshrined in English law, and the government's own COVID-19 recovery strategy says, Public Health England recommends trying to keep two meters away from people as a precaution. However, this is not a rule and the science is complex. The key is not to be too close to people for more than a short amount of time, as much as you can. Interestingly though, the two metre rule was enshrined in both Scottish and Welsh law, and in Northern Irish law, but only if you're in Northern Irish burial grounds. Anyway, trivia aside, the point is, if you're English, while the government made it sound like a law, the two metre rule was never actually a law. So this change from two metres to one metres plus is more of a psychological nudge than a substantial legal change. The government's change from 2 metres to 1 metre plus, like basically all coronavirus regulations, is a trade-off between the economy and public health. The UK economy shrank by 20.4% in April, and the government is increasingly worried that a full economic recovery will be impossible unless the economy gets back up and running soon. The 2 metre rule prevents pubs, restaurants, theatres, hotels, and for that matter, basically any business in the hospitality industry from opening at full capacity, and reducing to 1 metre plus should help this. To give you a sense of quite how much difference it apparently makes, the British Beer and Pub Association estimates that if social distancing remained at 2 metres, only a third of pubs in England would be able to reopen, but at 1 metre plus, that goes up to 3 quarters. So that's the economic benefit, but what's the health risk? Well, there are different opinions on this. According to Johnson and his scientists, there's not much of a difference. One meter plus, broadly equivalent to the risk at two meters if those mitigations are fully implemented. The World Health Organization recommends social distancing of at least one meter. Canada says 2 metres, the CDC in the US says at least 6 feet, so about 1.8 metres, Germany, Italy and Australia say 1.5 metres, Spain's changed from 2 metres to 1.5 on June 21st, South Korea went for a quirky 1.4 metres, China, France, Denmark and Hong Kong all say 1 metre. So who's right? What's the appropriate distance for effective social distancing? Well, there's basically been one authoritative academic study on the issue. The paper, funded by the WHO and published by The Lancet, is a meta-analysis of 172 observational studies from 16 countries across six continents. And when it came out at the start of June, it actually made the front pages. Although, you'd be forgiven for not realising that they were all talking about the same study. The Guardian's front page from June 2nd claims that cutting back to one metre doubles the infection risk, while the Daily Mail's front page on the very same day claims that one metre is enough and that it cuts the risk of infection by 80%. The same Daily Mail article also claimed that the risk of being one metre apart is only 2.6%, while the risk of two metres apart is 1.3%. But a Financial Times article from June 1st says that the risk of infection when individuals stand at least a metre away from an infected individual was 3% compared to 13% when they were within one metre. And according to the FT, every metre of distancing is likely to cut the risk in half again, the researchers found. Confusingly, all three of these articles are broadly correct. The Financial Times summary is probably the best though, as the study found that the risk of infection from social distancing of less than a metre, which is basically no social distancing at all, is 12.8% 
and the risk of infection with social distancing of at least a metre was 2.6%. This is where the Daily Mail got it slightly wrong. They claimed that the risk of social distancing of one metre was 2.6%, but the number was for social distancing of at least one metre. This distinction is important because the meta-analysis uses studies that had social distancing of up to two metres, and these all fall under the same bracket of at least one metre. So the 2.6% figure is calculated using a combination of both one metre and two metre studies, not just the one metre ones like the male seems to claim. The other major finding which is mentioned in the Financial Times article and on the Guardian's front page is that the study found that every added metre of social distancing halves the chance of infection, up to about 8 metres, at which point the chance of infection drops to zero. Interestingly, the study found that both face masks and eye protection are remarkably effective at reducing your chance of infection. Wearing a face mask and eye protection were associated with an 85 and 78% drop in risk of infection respectively. But this study should be taken with a pinch of salt for a couple of reasons. Firstly, and most importantly, it doesn't directly relate to the UK's policy change for the reason mentioned above. The study doesn't compare one metre social distancing to two metres, but rather no social distancing to social distancing of at least one metre. This is why the study ends on this cautious note. From a policy and public health perspective, current policies of at least one metre social distancing seem to be most strongly associated with a large protective effect, and distances of two metres could be more effective. In fact, the study is pretty unhelpful in this respect. This is going to get a bit mathsy, but stay with us. The studies used in the meta-analysis can be broadly split into one metre and two metre studies. The one metre studies let people go within one metre of virus infected patients, who we'll call group A. And they also had another group of people maintain social distancing of at least one metre from them, who we'll call group B. And then compared how many people got ill in group A versus group B. The two metre studies did the same thing, but this time two metres. That is, group C went within two metres of virus infected patients, and group D maintained social distancing of at least two metres. And then group C and group D's infection rates were compared. Now, the intuitive thing to do here would be to compare the infection rate of group B to group D. That is, to compare the infection rate for people who did social distancing of one metre to those who did social distancing of two metres. But this doesn't work. In fact, when you compile all of the one metre studies and all of the two metre studies using the meta-analysis and take their averages, group D, the two metre group, actually have a higher rate of infection than group B. This might feel counterintuitive, but it should make sense if we use an example. Imagine 100 people get within a metre of patients, and 100 other people maintain social distancing of at least one metre. 10 out of group A got ill, and only 5 of group B did. Now imagine a second example, where 100 people went within 2 metres of a patient, and 100 people maintained social distancing of at least 2 metres. 24% of group C got ill, and only 6% of group D did. Now group D has a higher rate of infection than group B. But this is only because the rate of infection in the second example was generally higher. In practice, this might be because the people in the one metre example all had face masks on, or have better hand washing practices, or just spent less time with patients overall. And this is actually what happened within the meta analysis. The two metre studies were obviously performed in settings with higher rates of infection generally, and because the studies were different, you can calculate the efficacy of social distancing by comparing group B to group A and group D to group C. Given that half as many people got infected in group B compared to group A, social distancing of one metre would seem to cut your infection rate by 50%. And given that a quarter of as many people got infected in group D compared to group C, Social distancing of 2 metres would seem to cut your infection rate by 75%. By the way, these aren't the values used in the study, they're just examples to help illustrate how calculating these kinds of things can be a bit complicated. Anyway, the tempting conclusion to draw here is that social distancing of 2 metres is twice as effective as social distancing of 1 metre, but this wouldn't be exactly correct. This is because the 2 metre studies don't tell us how many people went within 1 metre, all we know about group C is that they went within 2 metres. 
Imagine that everyone in Group C stayed at least a metre away from the patients. Essentially, Group C could practice social distancing of one metre, much like Group B did. In this case, as Group D were only a quarter as infected as Group C, social distancing of two metres could actually be four times as effective as Group B's social distancing of one metre. Now imagine the opposite. Everyone in Group C goes within a metre of their patients, much like Group A. In this case, social distancing of two metres would only seem twice as effective as social distancing of one metre. Group D were a quarter as infectious as Group C, but Group B were half as infectious as Group A. And given that, Group C and Group A perform the same levels of social distancing, which means that social distancing of two metres, Group D, is only twice as safe as social distancing of one metre, Group B. The point here is that to properly compare one metre social distancing with two metre social distancing, you need to make some assumption about how many people in Group C were within one metre of the patient. This is a point made by Open University's Professor of Statistics, Kevin Conway and leads to a more general point that no one really knows what the appropriate level of social distancing is, not least because the chance of infection depends not just on your social distancing, but also the duration of any interaction, which way you're facing, and lots of other things. Essentially, there isn't a right answer here. It's not like two metres is perfect and one metre is reckless nonsense. The risk isn't binary here. What we do know though is that the further apart you are, the lower your risks are. Anyway, we hope you enjoyed that video, and we're looking forward to seeing what you think about social distancing measures in your country. Do you think that people should be keeping further apart, or is it important to get the economy running again? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and as always, you can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video, and a special thanks to our Patreon backers for making videos like this one possible.